Yeah, the mushrooms and the microgreens together, I see them as along with, you know, the other vegetables, you know, on a smaller scale. For one, using what we already have, which is, you know, um, it's like a permaculture principle, right? And it's, and it's also very, you know, just good, I guess, business smart. You know, we use what we have and it's in great shape. Um, and it saves a lot of money to have, you know, the professional grade. Um, I think they're like food grade racks too. They say NSF on them. I'm not sure if that, I'm not sure. Um, I need to check on that. But yeah, I just see them, those three things as catalysts towards the bigger, the bigger mm -hmm. picture, the yeah. ultimate sort of the cause, which is, um, you know, having, you know, a half acre to an acre um, location mm -hmm. where, um, yeah, where can really crank out the, the abundance and educate people and, mm -hmm. you know, do it on a much bigger scale. So mm -hmm. I see it as a proof of concept, you know, you say in this 500 square feet and just a thousand square feet, you know, however much it is indoor, outdoor, mm -hmm. quantify all those numbers and those yields. And um, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's a great. Uh, but doing it even, you know, in the very middle of a city, you know, is, is totally doable with just a space. It could be, you know, a garden space and then a, a, a building that could have, you know, an indoor grow space, uh, maybe a kitchen as well. Um, that, that makes total sense. And I bet there's lots of spaces, you know, in LA that would be great for that, but just having indoor and outdoor space. Um, but yeah, making the most of the indoor space because, you know, you can do that year round and it's consistent and it can support somebody to work on it full time. You know, that, that, that makes sense as a place to start rather than something that's just going to be like part time or, um, or on and off, you know, in the seasons. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, um, especially being in such an urban and it's a dense environment, you just have to use what you have um to your to your benefit so you know if we don't have a ton of land and we're on a, a small parcel mm -hmm. then you know we can figure out you know it's like implementing those permaculture principles so and, and i love actually the concept of doing both together because i feel like there, there's a symbiosis there you know especially with the the used substrate with the used soil putting that together and you know reamending that or putting it into a worm bin or compost you know i feel like that stuff really adds up in terms of your nutrients and reintroducing those nutrients back into the farm and or even selling it you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah totally um yeah i think there's a real potential closed loop cycle uh, mm -hmm. uh possible with um growing indoor and outdoor that is, is truly regenerative. And I, and I hate it when people, you know, say that regenerative agriculture has to be outside and it's just you know, about land. It's not just about land. Regenerative isn't just about land. I mean, that yeah, is an yeah. important part of it, but um, you have to have inputs where those inputs coming from. Yeah, a lot yeah. of inputs have to be made inside. You like you Korean natural farming. Like if you're doing Korean natural farming, you have to ferment those things. Mm -hmm. in, in, you know, yeah, some of it you can do it outside some of the time, but a lot of it you have to do inside, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so indoors is an important part of the, the whole system. <laughs> mm -hmm. It yeah. is a I part mean, of the system. Yeah, I mean, the beautiful thing is that it, it can all be utilized like every single space really and it just takes mm -hmm. you know time and money and sometimes not even money just like ingenuity